name's John and I'm your host today. thought I'd do another video here, a beer requested video on the Meyer Lemon Tree and also Citrus. Um, this, this is a video for a viewer who was having problems with their tree and I have a few issues on this tree that I can kind of show you, um, or at least one issue on, on this tree, um, technically two, but uh, two small issues I guess. Uh, they're relatively easy to fix. Some of them are a little bit time consuming. So, um, but I just want to go over some of the basic care instructions for this tree. Uh, you know, once again, I, I probably didn't cover all the bases. Or I didn't cover all the bases when it comes to pests and stuff in my other video. So I'm going to do another video here. And at the end of the video, I'm going to put in pictures with all, with the the name of different uh, leaf viruses. Uh, um, different sorts of fungus and other problems that can cause uh, certain things to go on with your leaves and uh, your plant's health. So, so basically here, the first thing off is your fertilizer. So fertilizing is a much needed thing you're going to have to do with a potted citrus plant. If you live in a climate where you can have uh, just citrus plants out outdoors, so uh, southern part of Texas, Louisiana, um, Florida, all those different places like that, um, or out of out of country, uh, you know, tropical areas, Puerto Rico, New Zealand, places uh, in, in those regions that you can grow citrus uh, pretty easily, Hawaii as well. Um, but uh, the, the best thing to do with that situation is put them in the ground because citrus do not like to be moved. Um, one of the biggest problems with citrus let me pull this leaf off here so you can see is this right here see this this is sun burning and uh, the sun burning occurs when the, the plant is not used to the sun um, usually Meyer lemons like a little bit of shade this one does get a little bit of shade but it does get some intense sun so it has some leaf burning sometimes and um, a lot of the older leaves you'll see this on Again, this is leaf burning, and that's what that looks like. Here's the underside of the leaf. And it's from the sun being too intense and the, the um, plant not being able to protect itself with the, any UVB or UVA rays. So, but you'll see it sometimes as well on like new forming buds. Like here's a new forming bud here. Hopefully you can see that somewhat. Um, it has a little bit of little tiny leaves on it. Sometimes you'll see it come out and it'll form and it'll turn like a dark reddish color. That is perfectly normal to have happen. That is actually the UVA and UVB uh, um, in in the plant. It's basically, it's protecting itself from the UVA and UVB light. It's a, I believe a chlorophyll or something that's, that happens. Uh, don't quote me on that. Not te not doing technical terms right now, but it's a uh, it's a protectant that happens in the leaf. It changes its, its leaf color to protect it from the intense rays of the sun while it adjusts. So sometimes they, it won't do that and you'll see some of your new growth get a little bit burnt on the uh the plant so um but this plant here particularly um has one pest right now on it i can see and i'll show you what that looks like in a minute but let's cover fertilizing here first uh, fertilizing needs to be done in late late winter it needs to be done in spring and then it needs to be done in um in fall so the late winter is around January, February. You want to give your your plant a boost of fertilizer. Um, in around spring, around May to June, you want to give your 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 plant another boost of fertilizer um, so that it has some nutrients. So you want to give them a little boost of this citrus tone fertilizer here. I that's what I use. It's organic. I like it a lot. It's always worked well. I put on it puts on tons of lemons this tree and the orange as well on this uh, and a lot of growth when I use this stuff. Um, the ratios here are a little bit off on this this uh, chart. I don't like the ratios, so I'm not going to state them to you. But like, but they they're recommending their small tree. So if you have a tree plant in the ground, it's three feet tall. You want to give it six cups of fertilizer. This tree isn't really three feet. It's it's, more, it's three feet wide by three feet wide maybe, but it's not three feet tall. So technically, I could probably give this six cups. Do I give it six cups? No, I usually give it around four to five cups or four to five decent sized handfuls 
uh, when I'm fe when I'm feeding it. This other tree, the 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 orange behind me, actually is a smaller tree, so I usually give it around three handfuls of fertilizer, and then I just kind of scratch it into the soil surface so that um, some of it's in the soil and some of it's on the surface of the soil. So um, basically, that's that's fertilizing. So again, you want to do late winter, okay? Late winter, so January, February. Then you want to do May to June for your spring slash summer kind of feeding. So right at the cusp of spring and summer. And then you want to do your fall. And fall is September, October. Uh, fall is a crucial point. You want to make sure your your tree is well fed for fall, so that because you, you do not want to be fertilizing in the in the winter months when it's kind of on shutdown. If you're if you live in the northern hemisphere. Um, we do get way less light during the summer, so there's there's or winter, sorry, winter. We get late, way less light during the winter, around five or so hours. So it's it's crucial that you uh, either give it supplemental light during the winter, so that it can stay alive uh, and be actively growing. If you don't want it actively growing, you want it to kind of shut down. You can put it in a bright sunny window and just let it get the five hours of sunlight it needs to continue to keep the lemons on it that it has and kind of grow slowly but if you want those lemons to ripen up faster you can always uh, give it a couple grow lights and a window as well like you know just to give it a little supplemental light but it's I would advise supplemental light uh, and natural light at the same time um, if, if ever possible if not then a really good grow light a uh, couple CFLs could would work um, or you can get a high pressure sodium bulb to throw over top of it, uh, or a um, metal halide bulb as well. Metal halides work pretty well for uh, these type of plants. So basically, I'm gonna bring you down here. I'm gonna show you one of the pests, and then I'm gonna leave you off with um, basically some of the problems that can happen with uh, with the leaves and other things with your your citrus trees. This is basically general care for all citrus trees. They're all pretty much the same. So. Um, yeah, basically, there's a lot of pests that will uh, affect uh, a lot of citrus trees. Basically, almost almost any citrus tree in the citrus family. So, um, this is pretty much a general rule of thumb for most of it. Not, it's not a hundred percent tried and true method. It's just my compiled method. Not, it's not a, you know, somebody else have, might might have a better method than me for dealing with a lot of these. But, um, or identifying a lot of these pests but usually for anything when it comes to leaf or foliar I try to give it a neem oil spray usually that clears anything up uh, spider mites aphids things like that um, you don't usually get aphids too much on lemons but sometimes you do um, on the new growth but uh, neem oil spray uh, make sure you, you get this soil well well drained you need a lot of uh, perlite in it and and or bark dust or uh, fur, fur uh, bark in your soil. This is a this is a handful of soil here. You can see has some decaying leaves in it and a lot of perlite. This also has a little bit of peat moss. So it has about um, around 25 to 30 percent peat moss, um, some cocoa core, and then uh, some mushroom compost in there. So that's my mixture with a bunch of perlite mixed in. So it gets a lot of drainage, but it also holds some moisture because your, your lemon tree always needs to be wet. It always has, needs to have a moisture to it. Otherwise, it's going to, the leaves are going to yellow. It's not going to be happy. It's going to dry up. It's going to die. So, um, it's, and it's not going to thrive. And you always need some sort of moisture in the soil. Um, all right, with that said, that's basically your general all around general care for this thing. Uh, like I've said before, the the uh, my lazy gardener or not my lazy gardener parrot flower power. Sorry, parrot flower power is a lifesaver with these things. Um, if you're not sure about your your lemon tree and or your lime tree, citrus tree, whatever, and you're not sure about its health then you need to get one of those things honestly I, I'm if you're if you're uh, struggling with it and you don't want it to die that thing is a lifesaver it will pr bring your tree around in 
no time flat. This tree was having problems. I put one of those in, in, in there. It took the guesswork out of me trying to figure out what the hell was wrong with it. And it gave me instant results in helping this tree recover. And I've already gotten 10 or so lemons off it this year. So, and then a bunch of lemons coming on for a winter crop. The so part of this, this these hot. lemons here, those nodules right there. Let me try to see if I can point to them, keeping the camera steady. These things right here, these little dots that you're seeing, those are what's called scab, citrus scab. And to get rid of that, here's a basic 70% isopropyl alcohol rubbing alcohol. You just basically want to open this guy up and here's a Q-tip and just dip your Q-tip in it. So I have a bunch of out rubbing alcohol in here. And this will actually kill scab. You basically just want to take it and rub your Q-tip all along the stem, breaking up those those pustule or scab marks and instantly killing the bug. It's actually a bug that's inside of there. And you see here's one, another one here, right there. So you just wanna you wanna break it and then rub down. This this you're gonna have to do uh, all along your tree. You could do this by hand by doing this and just scraping them and then and just getting all of them you can and then going through afterwards and giving your tree a spray down with a with a water bottle if you if you want with rubbing alcohol in it so that's one way you can deal with this this tree has some scab on it i try to keep it down by using this method um, i don't really do the spray bottle method because i don't want the, the alcohol getting in the soil so I tend to do the spot method where I find a spot where I see some down here and I rub, break them off and soak the branch so that it kind of gets rid of them. So that's one way to get rid of scab. They're, it's generally pretty hard to get rid of. You could also blast it with a hose if you wanted to and then spray with alcohol or rub down with alcohol. Um, I find that kind of be a little bit ineffective. Um, I find it to be more effective to just run through and pick all of them off or scrape all of them off. It's, yes, it's time consuming, but it definitely, uh, I had a worse problem with scab on this tree before and it's starting to come back a little bit, but I just needed to hit it again with uh, a little bit of a regimen of, of alcohol and water or alcohol and swabs and just get it getting taken care of and so now I'm basically going to sh show you some other pictures of stuff that can happen um, with your plant when it starts yellowing leaves dropping leaves things like that you're worried about it um, and I'll roll those pictures and then I'll come back with the sign off okay Everybody, I hope that that helped you with all those pictures there. 
and this this kind of helped you uh, show you how to get rid of some of those problems, those issues you have. Uh, the scab isn't going to cause really yellowing of your plant, but if it gets too bad, it can cause some some nasty uh, issues with leaf diseases and stuff like that. Um, scab will happen on leaves too. I just picked two off on this leaf, so you have to you do have to go on the underside of leaves and check, as well as the um, the stems of the plant. So uh, another problem that can happen with this is just overwatering is a big issue with dropping of leaves. So make sure and check that. And those those sensors really do work, guys, uh, for checking your watering. You just get on your phone, check if what the moisture is, if it, it tells you if you need a water or not, and then boom, there you go. It takes the guesswork out of watering. It takes the hassle out of watering. It takes the worry out of your mind that you're you're you know. Uh, expensive and loved plant is is uh, dying or isn't healthy so um, definitely a little bit of peace of mind at least at the very least but um, the yellowing can also be caused by uh, you know nitrogen deficiencies different deficiencies when you take them outside not only burning can happen but also the, the leaves can yellow or if you take it inside from outside the leaves can yellow with the temperature change and the light change and start dropping profusely so if you move your citrus tree around if it's potted then that can happen too that's a normal thing but if you aren't seeing buds or if you're not seeing any leaves come out um, if all you're seeing is flowering all you're seeing is just flowering there's no new leaves then that's a worrying sign that that could be that there's some sort of external stressor one of these problems spider mites you know any of these scab issue any of those other things could be causing your plant stress so you just got to kind of cue into what the signals of the plant is telling you and then try to go from there um, but anyway guys I hope this helps I hope this uh, kind of gives you a little bit more info on on citrus uh, more than I, I gave in my last video at least uh, definitely if you have any more questions go to my about section of my channel and shoot me an email or go to the comment section down below and ask a question either one works um i try to check mo both of them pretty frequently sometimes i usually get to my youtube comments before i get to my email but if it's a lengthy you know question probably email will work better um and if you need to send pictures because i can see if i can identify the problem for you um with pictures uh might be easier especially since you really can't send pictures too well on on the youtube um, system. So, anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I hope you, you like this video. Like and comment, subscribe. And I'll see you again next time. Bye, everybody. Mm -hmm.